Hello, this is Nanny with your bedtime story, the tale of Piglin Bland. Once upon a time, there was an old pig called Auntie Pettitoes. She had a family of eight, four little girl pigs called Crosspatch, Suck Suck, Yuck Yuck and Spot and four little boy pigs called Alexander, Piglin Bland, Chin Chin and Stumpy. The eight little pigs were always hungry and had very good appetites. I do believe I can't be coping much longer with my unruly brood, Auntie Pettitoes sighed. They are indeed becoming a burden and a worry. Good little Spot shall stay at home to do the housework, but the others must go. Piglin Bland, you must go to market. You too, Alexander. Auntie Pettitoes handed the two little pigs their licences, permitting them to travel to market. Beware of hen roosts, bacon and eggs, and mind your Sunday clothes, she warned. And remember, if you only cross, if you once cross the country, county boundary, you cannot come back. Take these eight conversation peppermints and do heed the moral sentiments on them, and you'll come to no harm. Piglin Bland and Alexander set off for market. Piglin Bland and Alexander trotted along steadily for a mile when Alexander began to feel hungry. They sat down to eat. Alexander gobbled up his dinner and then asked for one of Piglin's peppermints. Piglin Bland said he wished to save them and held them out of reach. Alexander jumped up to try to get one and they both tumbled down, papers flying out of their pockets. That's quite enough, Alexander, reproved Piglin Bland. Pick up the licences. Come along, it's a long way to market. Pigs trotted along together singing. Tom, Tom, the piper's son stole a pig and away he ran. Oh, Piglin Band gasped suddenly and came to an abrupt halt. What's this, young sirs? Stole a pig? Where are your licenses? the policeman demanded. Piglin Bland pulled out his and showed it to the policeman. And Alexander, after fumbling, handed over a scrumpled piece of paper. What's this? asked the policeman. Two and a half ounces of conversation sweeties at three farthings? This isn't a licence. But I had one, answered Alexander. The policeman looked doubtful. It's not likely they'll let you start without one. I'm passing the farm. You may walk with me. And he led Alexander away. Piglin Bland continued on his way dejectedly. Oh, I cannot bear the thought of market. I never wanted to go in the first place. All I ever wanted was to have a little garden of my own and grow potatoes. Piglin pulled his coat tighter round his neck and put his hands in his pockets to warm them. What's this? he wondered. Alexander's licence! He started to run back. Oh, Mr Policeman, I found the licence! Piglin Bland took several wrong turns 
and very soon he was quite lost. The wind whistled and the trees creaked and Piglin began to feel frightened. I can't find my way home, Piglin cried. Wherever can I be? I can go no further tonight, I fear. I must find somewhere to rest for the night and the shelter from this wind. Then past the edge of the wood, Piglin saw a small wooden hen house and crept inside. He squeezed between two hens. Bacon and eggs, bacon and eggs, clucked the hens. It is only a hen house, but what can I do? I must leave no later than daybreak, resolved Piglin. Feeling rather alarmed, he curled up and fell fast asleep. <clears throat> In less than an hour, the door creaked open. The bright light from a lantern shone into Piglin's face. It was the farmer, Mr Piperson. I need six of you fowls to take to market in the morning, he whispered to himself, grabbing a hen roughly. Here's another, said Mr Piperson, seizing Piglin by the scruff of the neck and dropping him into the hamper. Then he dropped five more dirty, kicking, cackling hens upon the top of P Piglin Bland. Farm kitchen, Mr. Piperson let Piglin out of the hamper. I am but a poor little pig, said Piglin, showing his empty pockets at the farmer's request. You'll stay for supper, asked the farmer. Yes, replied Piglin Bland nervously. Thank you kindly. Piglin Bland sat on a stool by the fire while Mr. Piperson pulled off his boots and threw them to a corner. As they hit the wainscot, there was a smothered noise. Shut up, growled Mr. Piperson to the noise. Indeed, it seemed to Piglin that something at the far further end of the kitchen was making a, taking a suppressed interest in the cooking. Mr. Piperson poured out three platefuls of porridge. One for himself, one for Piglin, and a third. Piglin ate his supper discreetly. After supper, Mr Piperson consulted an almanac and looked at Piglin. Then he prodded Piglin's ribs. It's too late in the season for cured bacon, he muttered to himself. Then he turned to Piglin. Oh well, you may sleep on the rug, he said. You'll likely be moving on again? Mr Piperson asked P Piglin Bland the next morning. Before Piglin could answer, there was a whistle from outside. It was Mr Piperson's neighbour to take him to market. Now shut the door behind me, he continued, and don't meddle with anything. Mind or I'll skinny, said Mr. Piperson, menacingly. Back inside, Piglin finished off his breakfast and began to sing to himself. Suddenly, a little smooth voice chimed in. Smothered voice, sorry. Smothered voice chimed in. Piglin listened carefully and went round the kitchen searching for the voice. Then he came to a locked cupboard. He pushed a peppermint under the door. It was sucked in immediately. Aha, said Piglin. Very interesting. He pushed in his last six peppermints and they were all sucked up. How's Mr Piggy Wiggy then? asked Mr Piperson when he returned from market. I must admit to being a little hungry, Piglin answered. Mr Piperson prodded him in the ribs again. You feel nice and fat to me, he said laughing. Well then, I had better fix some supper for us. After supper, Mr Piperson went to bed and Piglin Bland sat by the fire eating his porridge.
All at once, a little voice spoke. My name is Pigwig. Make me some more porridge, please. I am Piglin Bland, replied Piglin, rather startled. More porridge? Of course. How did you escape? He forgot to lock the cupboard, Pigwig replied. How did you come here, Piglin Bland continued, handing Pigwig his porridge. Stolen, replied Pigwig, with her mouth full. What for? inquired Piglin. To which Pigwig answered, Bacon. Hands. Piglin wondered why Pigwig didn't run away, but Pigwig didn't seem to know her way home. I'm going to market, Piglin said. I have two big pig papers I make to take you to the bridge if you have no objection. How wonderfully kind, explained Pigwig, thankfully. Piglin told Pigwig all about Market and how he would m much rather have his own little garden. I love flowers, Pigwig exclaimed. Potatoes, corrected Piglin. Pigwig started to sing and very soon she was fast asleep. Early the next morning, Piglin tied up his little bundle and woke Pigwig. Come along, Pigwick, it's time for us to be on our way, he whispered. But it's so dark, complained Pigwick. Come away, urged Piglin. We will be able to see when we get used to it. Piglin Bland and Pigwick slipped away hand in hand and crossed an untidy field to the road. Presently, Pigwig turned to Piglin and asked, Why do you want to go to market, Piglin? I don't want, replied Piglin rather miserably. I want to grow potatoes. They continued along the lane, hiding behind a wall as they passed a ploughman in a nearby field. But suddenly Pigwig stopped. Slowly, jogging up the road, came the grocer's cart. Take that peppermint out of your mouth, instructed Piglin, we may have to run. Don't say a word, leave it to me. Where are you two going? demanded the grocer. Are you going to market? The two pigs nodded. The grocer laughed. I thought as much. It was yesterday. Show me your licences. The grocer looked at their licences. I'm not sure, he said, looking suspiciously at Pigwig. This here pig... Is a young lady pig. He consulted the lost, stolen or strayed section of his newspaper. Ten shillings reward, he muttered, and went off to consult the ploughman. Just you wait here, he warned. Piglin and Pigwig waited for a moment, and then off they raced. They ran down the hill till they came to the river, they reached the bridge and crossed it hand by in hand. Freedom! Safety! cried Piglin happily. You shall have your garden full of potatoes, said Pickwick with delight. And pansies, replied Piglin. Then over the hills and far away, Pickwick danced with Piglin bland. As they danced, they sang a tune. Tom, Tom, the piper's son, stole a pig and away he ran. And all that tune that he could play was over the hills and far away. The end of the story. I hope you enjoyed that.